All right, guys, we are uh, lucky enough to be uh, to welcome in this week. We've got uh, FWF champion, Blitzkrieg Pro Bedlam champion, and Impact Superstar VSK. Did I forget anything there, VSK? I, I was just racking my brain quick. Honestly, I keep forgetting that I'm the Bedlam champion. That whole match is a blur to me. So, uh, yeah, I think, you, I think you got everything. Nice. That match was incredible. Um, I oh, know thank a, you. A lot of our listeners, they hear us talk about Blitzkrieg Pro all the time uh, because, you know, we're a sponsor and uh, DJ's out on the West Coast, so he doesn't get to see the shows unless they're on Twitch or uh, IWTV, uh, which that uh, last event is. And if you guys have not uh, taken that in, I highly, highly suggest uh, taking that in for sure. I'm I'm afraid to watch it back because I'm afraid I'll have like uh, (laughs) memories of all the pain and it'll come back and I'll feel it again. (laughs) (laughs) And you wrestled the next day, didn't you? Didn't you go do a Beyond show the next day? Uh, Myself and Mark Sterling took on Alex Reynolds and Johnny Silver. Uh, oh, it was uh, it was a fun weekend, but also one that you know made me lay in bed for a couple of days after and <laughs> exactly, yeah. reevaluate my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you decided to keep going after that yep, reevaluation. Yep, decided to keep going. <laughs> so uh, we'll start firing off some questions here for you, man. We really do appreciate the time. Uh, one of them comes from our uh, our inner circle here uh, behind the, one of our guys behind the scenes. He wants to know uh, where did the name VSK actually come from. It's such a silly story that the more times I retell it, the more I'm like, ah, this is so dumb. Uh, So I first got uh, AOL when I was in fifth grade and I needed a screen name. So I made my screen name VS King 98. The VS is my actual name. Everybody just calls me Vinny now, it seems like in the ring. But yeah, the VS is my actual name and then the K stands for King. And it was my screen name from fifth grade up until like whenever AIM stopped being a thing in my life, which was like maybe like 2005, six, somewhere around there. And then I started wrestling in 2007. And I was like, you know what? I have this name already, VSK. I'm just going to run with it. I'll think of something better later. Uh, In March, it'll be, (laughs) in March, it'll be 15 years. I haven't thought of anything better yet. Well, there you go. (laughs) I thought, I thought for sure it had something to do with uh, Shawn Michaels since you're a big Shawn Michaels fan. Yeah, everybody, everybody kind of thinks that. And then, like, I, I'm also a big RVD fan. So everyone thought, like, oh, three letters. So RVD, HBK, the K for HBK. And I that would probably be a better story than it was my screen name when I was 10. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Mine was uh, Moose82 with a zero. as Like, it had three zero or three O's. And the middle okay. one was a zero. And then I give my wife crap all the time. If she's, like, mouthing off or, you know, something, I'll, I refer to her as her. AIM screen, screen name. That, yeah, yeah. That's oh, how long no. we've been uh, been, uh, been, uh, been together. So yeah, right. Oh my god. But, AOL. Uh, so big news. You you uh, you signed officially signed with Impact. You're on uh, the, you're on their website. So I'm so assuming you I officially ha- signed. I I have not officially signed, but everybody keeps assuming oh. that. So I'm gonna keep running right. with that. Uh, but I am on their website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made the website. Like that's. <laughs> So you you had a cup of coffee in AEW, right? They used you for yeah. a little bit, and then I, I actually did like a year's worth of uh, dark and elevation matches. Uh, oh I can't God. believe that it was an actual like calendar year that I did stuff with them. But I, I've been getting the a year ago, you know, whatever memories on Facebook, and it has been apparently. Wow, wow, that's incredible. Um, and now you you know kind of pseudo with Impact. How has life changed <laughs> with uh, with AEW and uh, Impact now being? part of your life besides way more travel i'm sure uh for sure uh i i like stress every day in my life because i want to be as busy as possible and like 2019 i had like the best year wrestling wise i've ever had got to do as like more shows than i've ever done before did a lot of traveling and i said hey 2020 this is my year spoiler alert 2020 was no one's year uh <laughs> things got, things got out just a tad uh so all of my like goals uh that i had set for myself for the first six months i was like okay this whole year is going to be a bust uh but once uh i got to go down to aw which was around like august or september i think of 2020 i started getting busier than i'd ever been and you know pl- wrestling in new places meeting new people so all of that has been great and the exposure and the busyness has helped me kind of stress a little less, but not really. Uh, and now because of all the traveling, I just left my nine to five job, which is like the biggest change. Uh, not necessarily 
you know, like I'm, it's a big, uh, it's a big scary leap of faith basically is what I'm trying to say. So that's been the biggest change in my life, but I've been lucky enough to be doing all this traveling and getting these good opportunities. So I felt like it was time to cut that cord. That's awesome, man. Like you said, it's a long time coming. You've been doing this since 2006, you said 2007, 2007. Yeah, man. That's incredible. Good for you, man. Good for you. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. My body doesn't think it's good for me, but uh, <laughs> good for you what for happened right to now, the desk right? we used to sit at? Your yeah. body's probably saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they brought you in with Brian Myers as his student, which is real life. You went to create a pro and uh, Brian, I'm sure Brian Myers taught you a lot. Um, what is he like as a trainer? Uh, so another like common misconception. I actually never trained at create a pro. Uh, I started training with Ricky Reyes at Victory Pro Wrestling. And then uh, Mm -hmm. right around the time Creative Pro opened, I was contemplating whether or not I was going to stop wrestling. I felt like I needed some sort of change that was either going to be move on to a new company or stop wrestling altogether. And I just happened to go to the Creative Pro open house. And from the second I walked in, fell in love with the place. Uh, So I spent like probably like six months just going down to open ring and stuff like that. And then uh, when Alex Reynolds started phasing himself out as a trainer there, uh, I kind of stepped in and did like two years of me being a coach there. Uh, So I never directly worked under Brian in that regard. However, just being around him and talking to him is always such a learning experience. No learning tree, pun intended. Like (laughs) the way that he sees wrestling and the way that he puts together, you know, wrestling matches or puts together training sessions or even just outside stuff like the the podcasting stuff. I've learned so much from that, just watching him uh, do his thing. And then, you know, you can obviously see the people that have come from Creative Pro, the Chris Statlanders, MJF, Caster, Barrett Bronson, all of these guys. Uh, I, you know, have watched them come from nothing to be TV stars now. And just the like stuff that he instills in them, you don't see a lot on the indies. So even though I've never directly been like under him as a student per se, a hundred percent, he's been like a big influence on me, a big teacher, uh, like a big brother that I look up to and, and try and learn as much as I can from him. Even just like the fact that I have uh, real headphones and a microphone now is because <laughs> I did so much stuff with his podcast where I was like, oh, wow, you should step it up. So you look like you know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about. <laughs> You sound great. Uh, oh, you thanks. Really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Creative Pro has a great uh, just, you know, from going to the Blitzkrieg shows and being part, you know, with them, you, they've got Aaron Rourke in the wings. Yep. That seems to be up and coming. Uh, Bryce Donovan kills it. Bobby Orlando is entertaining as hell. Yep. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Kip Stevens is good. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, th- I'm sure they've got other guys that I can't think of off the top of my head here. But those guys, I feel like it's just a matter of time. Just like it was for you, you know, before you at they get I know Aaron Rourke has been on dark a little bit. Yep. Um, Bryce Donovan was when they were in Boston. Um, so I, I it it's definitely a great stepping stone, it seems like, to get, you know, get your foot in the door and get where you want to go. For sure. And one of the most important things about Creator Pro is the connections that you have there. Obviously, you gotta put the work in and you have to bust your ass like you know, if, if you right. don't do that stuff, you're not going to go anywhere. Right. But if you do, you know, continue to work hard, you have so many avenues. You have Pat Buck, who is now an agent for WWE. You have Brian Myers, who's at Impact and doing everything else under the sun. You have, uh, you know, MJF and all, everyone that I just listed that can help you out at, uh, at AEW. So there's an avenue for everybody if you're willing to do the work. And luckily, Creative Pro has been open since 2014. Everyone that has come through there is willing to do the work. And that's the most important thing. So cool. I got one more question about Brian and I'll let DJ fire some off. What's one thing that you've learned from him that you would pass down to some of these younger guys uh, and guys that are, you know, just stepping in the ring for the first time. It's a lot of it is uh, the way that he looks at a match, the way that uh, he structures a match. You know, like I said, I'm doing this 15 years. There's times where I think like, okay, I know everything there's to know. And then like, I'll have a conversation with him about something. And it's like, oh, all right. Well, that's a new point that I haven't really like materialized for myself yet. And then, you know, you kind of change the way that you structure a match or put a match together or something that you feel differently in a match. So that's a very vague answer. But without like, you know completely pulling back the curtain and like saying like, here's the magician's tricks. Uh, 
there's so much that goes into a match where it's like an onion, where there's all these layers. And every time I think I'm right about to hit the middle, there's another layer. And it's like, God, why did I not notice that before? So that has really been such a, a great thing for me because I see this stuff and, you know, you can get something told to you over and over and over. But then I'll watch like maybe a student's match or someone who's a little less experienced. And then it's like I can now see what he was trying to explain to me, someone else doing. And now I can explain it to them. And then I realize oh, I understood this more than I realized because now I'm able to teach it. It's like this, that's been the coolest like takeaway from Creative Pro for me is like kind of learning things and then learning that I know more than I even realized when these younger people are asking me questions. Awesome. If some that makes Mr. any Miyagi. sense. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's real, <laughs> some, some real Mr. Miyagi stuff there. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> you, you realize, oh, wait, I was doing this the whole time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't just doing wax off for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, TJ, what do you got? Well, I love like funny either on the road or or locker room stories. Like you, you got a you got a good story for us, like like while traveling or while you were in the back. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, you see, the problem with me is I have next to no memory, and then uh, having ladder matches <laughs> doesn't oh, man. help any, anything either. <laughs> uh. I mean, not like the funniest story, uh, but like this past weekend, I had three shows, uh, two in Massachusetts and then one back on Long Island. And uh, I have helped Bryce Donovan uh, become an action figure collector where he now uh, just constantly is sending me, hey, uh, I'm going to possibly get this figure. Talk me out of it. And I'll be like, no. Yeah, no, I it's like us. Gavin. We don't talk each other out of the body. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, I was just at uh, I stayed at Smart Mark's house the other night, and uh, there's a brewery right by his house that I really love. And I was having problems ordering the beer on my phone, so he's like, "Oh, just come back." And so I was supposed to have left already, so I came back to his house, uh, ordered the beer on his computer, which was very nice of him to let me do. I'm driving away. I'm like maybe 20 minutes, half hour away. And he texts me, hey, Vin, and sent me a picture of my credit card sitting on his computer. Yeah. So now I'm currently credit cardless. Uh, there's just all fun stuff like that. That yes. you know, I'm getting myself in trouble and getting my friends in trouble by spending money or losing their money. <laughs> uh, but yeah, unfortunately, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything funny. If I think of anything, I will uh, you know, happily cut everybody off and tell you a fun story. But nice. I don't know. It's it's. There, right now I'm so busy and this doesn't, this is like a weird braggy thing. I, it, but it's not meant to be that I'm so busy right now that like every day is just blending into each other. And like, I get home and I'm like, what day is it? What am I, yeah. does the garbage yeah. go out today? I don't know where I am. <laughs> hey, you're putting in the work. That's not braggy. You're putting in the work and, <laughs> and right. you deserve what you're yeah, getting. You know? Thank you. So. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. I'm um, just curious. I live near a smart mark. What, uh, what brewery was it? Oh, Treehouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, Everybody loves Treehouse. I'll make so 40 like, minutes from there. Yeah, I think that's what about Mark is, too. Uh, I, I did Beyond and then Chaotic, and yep. it was on the way. And yeah. uh, he was like, you have to put an order in and go pick up yourself some. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I do have to do that. It's so crazy. Suddenly, you know, a couple minutes later, I have a $70 uh, tab at, at <laughs> Treehouse. I'm like, oh, man, what am I doing? <laughs> it's so crazy driving in there too, because you see guys with like hand trucks and just oh cases my God, and yeah. cases and cases and cases. I it's kept wild. sending pictures to my wife because it was like so nice. And I was like, this is three and a half hours away. We have to come back and just hang out here one day. I was like in awe of how nice it was. Yeah, the town uh, right outside of it, Surbridge, not to get into uh, you know, off topic here, but Surbridge <laughs> uh is real nice too. If you need like a getaway with the wife, nice, nice. old right. school town. So um, yeah, I'm from Western Mass, just like uh, just like Smart Mark. So, oh, gotcha, um, gotcha. Okay. Originally, now I live in like Northernish Connecticut, right over the line, right, right, okay. right down the road from. Right by, okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, I got one last question for you regarding wrestling, and then we're gonna get into some. You mentioned it a little bit, action figures. Sure, mm -hmm. um, who do you have a current dream opponent? I'm sure Shawn Michaels, nice. RVD. You know, if you could wrestle anyone, it would be one of them. But who, you know, WWE, AEW, Impact. Even like guys that unfortunately just got, you know, let go from Ring of Honor or anything like that. Is there anybody that you would love to get in the ring with or that you're dying to get in the ring with? I would I would love to get in the ring again uh, with Brian Myers. The only time we've ever wrestled uh, was that it, that triple threat match yeah, at Blitzkrieg. Yep. Yep. And that match just it. We weren't all firing on all cylinders. I especially wasn't for whatever reason. And uh, 
it just felt off. And mm-hmm. I want to, I definitely want to do a makeup with that. And then that's, you know, like I was saying, as you know, I, I admire the guy a lot. So to not have the best performance in that match, I definitely would want to have a redo one-on-one of that. Uh, I, I always love wrestling MJF. Uh, as much as, you know, he's a jerk and nobody likes him. We do have good matches together. Uh, try, you, you know, like the, the stuff Brian Danielson's doing right now is unbelievable on AEW. Yeah. Like yeah. he's a dream. Op- he should be a dream opponent for everybody. Uh, and then, you know, I still think like uh, AJ Styles is the best wrestler uh, in the world. And we actually had a tag match together way back, like maybe six or seven years ago whenever he like first left impact uh we had a tag match together and that was like a mind-blowing experience but i would love to be on the other side of the ring from him i think that would be unbelievable nice uh if it makes you feel better nobody noticed you guys not being on all cylinders in that triple threat <laughs> it was just everybody <laughs> everybody because the ref uh i don't know if you remember oh the ref, something God. happened with the ref he like tore his quad i don't know he pulled the Vince man and he thought he, he tore his quad move. i don't know if he's a listener of the podcast i want to say I don't anything know if he is discouraging either, but, <laughs> but he, he thought he tore his quads but then it, it, we got in the back and he was like i think i just uh got a cramp <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, my kid was with me he's like what is wrong with the ref that's all he kept talking about max caster's <laughs> rap and what was wrong with the ref so the whole time. Not, not to like sidebar too much but uh that match, we all, like I said, we all just felt a little off, and then that happened, but the three of us in the ring didn't know that that happened. So mm. we just, like, see that the ref is down on the ground, and we're like, is he saving time to, like, not get up for these, like, uh, near falls or whatever? <laughs> and then we just didn't think anything of it, and then we get to the back, and everyone's, like, running to the ring to help him out, or, like, checking on him when he comes into the back, and we're just, like, talking to each other, the three of us, and... Everyone's like, what's going on? And they're like, he tore his quads. He can't walk. And I'm like, we're like, what? And then he comes to the back and he's like apologizing to us. And none of us even knew that anything happened. And right. we're like, oh, yeah, you're fine. And he's like, I was just rolling. I was trying to just do barrel rolls, trying to get over your car. He's like, okay, well, you did your job then, I guess. Uh, poor, <laughs> poor guy. guy. Poor yeah. guy. <laughs> but I've seen, him, I've seen him a bunch of times since then. He's been working all over the place since then. And oh, his good. legs are holding up. He's doing okay. <laughs> he's a yeah. super nice guy. I feel bad. He is. He is. Imagine it, but it's just such an odd thing to see. You know? 100%. It's probably scary to think that you tore your quad. Yeah. You know? And he was like, he, he was in the panic of, I think I just tore both my quads. And then he was also in the panic of I'm in the middle of a match with people that I don't want to mess up their match. Exactly. And like, you know, it's the silly wrestler brain of I got to fight through it, which like you don't need to. (laughs) (laughs) You're a ref. Throw throw the X up on yourself and (laughs) and get another ref out there. (laughs) Before we uh, before we jump over to action figures, is there anything else you got for uh, VSK? Well, are you wrestling wise? Is uh any time coming over to the west coast you know we got apw and i, I would uh, love to sacramento and you know um, I, I go to all that uh about a year ago maybe a year and a half ago now i want to say the summer of 2020 the like start of my travel uh was going out to championship wrestling from hollywood i did uh mm, i think yep. i did like four weeks of tv taping for that and then i went down to uh, what was that prime time wrestling is that no is that what it is they do. Like, they were doing like the weekly pay per views, not NWA, but like kind of with the NWA. I don't remember crickets. That, all that right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but I do remember Hollywood, though. That yes, I yes. Remember so that. I, yeah. I went out there and did like whatever it was, like four weeks of TV with them, uh, just like on a whim. And then since then, I haven't been able to get back out there, just scheduling wise. Right. Uh, but I still do talk to that promoter and would love to get back out there a million percent. But I, if I do ever want to uh, get out there, I want it to be like a week where I can just like drive up and down and hit all these companies so I can get the most out of it. Exactly. Uh, so now that I'm out of my, you know, nine to five job, I can start like piecing that together. So yeah, I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm hopeful to do a lot more traveling now that I have this freedom. Nice. Um, hit me up up North. <laughs> oh, happily. Yeah. I just have to, I have this like uh, pesky little thing. My wife is uh, six months pregnant. So we have this like baby coming. It's going to like totally yeah. change my wrestling. It's going to change. Everything. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> once I figure that out, then I'll be traveling again. Nice. Is that is that going to be your first one? Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It changes everything. Yeah, it changes everything. That's what everyone keeps telling me. All, all in good ways. All in good ways. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. So we've talked about you being an HBK fan. 
You talked yes. about, you know, helping Bryce Donovan grab some figs. You've been yep, on a yep. major pod, uh, their vlogs and stuff. What is your favorite HBK figure? What is the, what is oh, the, man. your grail HBK figure? Uh, so I have the, uh, Russ, I'm looking at them. They're right over to, <laughs> to my right. That's why, that's why I'm glancing away. Uh, there is a WrestleMania 14 uh, Mattel Elite that comes with like his entrance attire uh, that I think is like one of the best likenesses of him. It might be yep. my favorite figure, and also like that figure is just sentimental to me because like when he had that uh, WrestleMania 14 match and like retired for those four years, I right. was like, oh man, my favorite wrestler is gone, and like I still like in my head I'm like, oh Sean's last match WrestleMania 14, even though there's like a better career that happens for 10 years after. That. <laughs> right. Uh, so like that figure is really cool to me. Uh, I have uh, his AWA figure, which is like his rookie figure, which is, yep. it's not like it's hard to find, but it's very expensive. So uh, mm -hmm. that's like a cool little feather in the cap to have. Uh, oh, really? Man. The I think the the Shawn Michaels Ultimate figure that just came out like a year ago yeah. is like hands down like the best Shawn Michaels like for likeness and the the cool attire that it has. Yeah, and, I really like that figure. Yeah, um, screw job attire. Yeah. Screw yeah yeah. And like <laughs> they've done so many versions of that figure, uh, obviously, but like that one like really like encapsulates it. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's probably the Mattel ones are probably the best. And then yeah. there's like, you know, obviously I still have my childhood like red and white Hasbro figure. I have like a, a mint on card black and silver Hasbro figure. Uh, so, yeah, they're all my favorite, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's, Ric Flair is my favorite and he's so boring, like figure wise. But like, yeah, if somebody asked me to pin down which one's my favorite, it's like, yeah, that new Ultimate Edition one is awesome. But I love them all. I can't get yeah. rid of all, any of them. I wouldn't and they all have, uh, I'm sure each one has its own sentimental value or like yep. meaning to you. So it's like, how do you say just one? Right. Right. Now, do you yep. collect all the guys or is it just HBK or do you have like a, do you have rules? I have, I have like rules that are, my collection is the literal definition of rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> 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 so like, uh, I want to say it's probably like four or five years ago now. I'm in my house 10 years. But we just redid the basement uh, four or five years ago. And mm -hmm. when we started redoing it, we bumped out like my TV area and we were like, oh, this would be a cool little display if we got some bookshelves and put the figures in the bookshelves. It'd be like a nice adult way to display your figures. So I got it. And then I was like, oh, I just have like my childhood stuff. And then I always collected Shawn Michaels stuff, even though I kind of stopped collecting when we bought the house because it was like all right, I can't be spending all this money on figures anymore. Sure. So I'm putting up my childhood figures and it's like, oh man, these are kind of beat up. And if I, if I display this figure and I don't have this one to go with it, then I should probably get this one too. And then it became like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and finish the Hasbro collection. So then I did that except for the last series. And then I'm like, all right, well, that looks really cool. But there's so many Shawn Michaels that I didn't even realize I don't have. I guess I got to go back and get all of them. So I started doing that and then it's like, oh, uh, I have all these Macho Man figures and he's like my childhood favorite wrestler. I should just finish the set, get all the Mattels, put them on display. Okay, cool. Then I'm like, oh, wow, I have this uh, this British Bulldog figure and this Bret Hart oh, no. figure. I should probably just do the Hart Foundation. And that's like, well, if I'm going to do this faction, I should do Evolution and DX and, and the NWO. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll get those guys too. So now my collection, the main thing that I'm doing right now is uh, the new gen figures because that's like mm -hmm. the era that I grew up on. So I have a shelf that's all the new gen stuff and then I bought that ring because why wouldn't I? Uh, so I'm going to have to make a new display and put it all with that stuff and then I'll have an empty shelf that I'll have to fill up with something. So <laughs> the rules are whenever I get an idea, my wallet goes, oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Say my wallet and my wife, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which brings me to: Do you collect anything else? And what does your wife think? So my wife is actually super supportive of the collecting. Uh, she knows that like my basement and my collection is like my happy place. So mm -hmm. as long as I'm not breaking the bank or anything, like right now, obviously I'm on a little hold with baby on the way and right. you know <laughs> leaving my regular job. Yeah. So a little hold right now, uh, just getting like the Shawn Michaels of the worlds and uh, the Chris Statlander when she comes out. Yeah, but uh, right. 
she's super super supportive of of the collecting uh she every time she goes like target or walmart she'll give me a call send me a picture like here's what's here do you need any of this stuff <laughs> yeah uh, nice so yeah i still i still get wrestling figures from her for christmas as if i'm 10 that's that 10 probably even too old <laughs> and you're old <laughs> you're still like yeah, yeah. yeah 100 <laughs> my parents like my parents will still ask me like what do you want for christmas and i'm like oh i guess i could use this figure and they're like you're 35 like come on <laughs> sorry man <laughs> All right. 39 it's uh, the same thing yeah so. i'm 43 <laughs> <laughs> and then uh as far as collecting other things uh so with my uh daughter on the way i've been trying to find an excuse to collect uh the 66 uh batman stuff nice yes, Cause, like, yes. i've seen like some cool stuff and i'll just pick it up sporadically over the years but uh just recently uh actually you can see it on one of some, I just did a toy vlog with uh, Ethan Page and the Major Pod. So whenever either one of those come out, you can see it. But I uh, picked up the Funko Pops of Batgirl and Catwoman from the '66 uh, Batman show with the reasoning in my head, so I could be like, "Oh, I need these. Uh, they'll be my daughter's first figures, and like then we'll have that Batman connection." That's awesome. Have you it's seen either the, awesome or crazy. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, for the little ones, they have like little people like made by play school and there's actually an ultimate warrior and macho man. So uh, I actually have two sets of them uh, all because right, all right. my, my, my <laughs> wife and I bought it. My wife and I bought it for, you know, when we found out we were pregnant and then before we had announced it, uh, my sister-in-law had seen it and bought it for us for when we did announce that we were pregnant. So now we have two sets of those and then two sets of the office little people because we're both uh, big office fans. Nice. I was going to say there's nice. office ones too if that, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's your bag. So. I love it. My son's too old for all that. So it Yeah. <laughs> so you got to get him into collecting regular figures then. He does. Right. He does. Oh, he's actually right. he's got some uh, G.I. Joes up on like his wall. Um, he's got a signed Zack Ryder retro that I got him at one of the uh, live shows and stuff Very like cool. that. So um yeah dj you got any uh figure questions for him or what no dj you don't collect figures oh, oh i do oh okay. just, so, <laughs> don't yeah, talk I mean, to him for uh, too long he'll try to get you to buy a hot toy, <laughs> a hot toy sack yeah so, like, so yeah i just i'm not in my regular place for recording gotcha, gotcha, okay yeah I'm, I'm visiting the the folks in in inglewood so this is actually my childhood room. Okay. Um, <laughs> so like there used to be figures in here <laughs> and figure like figure fed going on in this room. Um, and, the, and my daughter, like she's uh, 16 and uh, she's gotten into Jeff Hardy collecting. Oh, okay. like, like she'd seen how like, you know, she saw his entrance and then she then she started seeing the figure. And then she watched that last Mattel show with the, the ultimate Jeff Hardy yes, figure. Yes. And then that that did it for her. She's like. I'm collecting Jeff Hardy, so <laughs> so I had to go out and find some of that stuff for for Christmas. And <laughs> he's got 20 years worth of figures. You got to go hunt down. Oh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> well, she's got a job, so she can do. There that. you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's okay. So you, so you said you started with Hasbro. Uh, I actually started. I'm that old that I started with LJNs. Uh, my my parents went to WrestleMania one uh, closed circuit. Uh, so one of my like first toys was the LJN Hogan where he's like in the squatty potty position. Right. And then, uh, they gave me, yes, I love that yes. reference. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't do a double bicep flex when you're on the squatty potty. Come on. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then the other, uh, thing from my Depends childhood, on what I had the night before. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like my first toy, like ever was like the Hogan LJN that I used to just throw around. And then they gave me the program for WrestleMania one that I used to use as a coloring book that I, you know, oh. regret now, <laughs> but uh, it's still somewhere in my collection of magazines, but I I've always been into wrestling. So like my, my parents were into it a little bit. They didn't realize the monster that they were creating, but like uh, my, uh, some of my earliest memories are like going to my grandparents' house and they would hide the LJN uh, figures uh, that they bought me around the house and I'd have to go hunt them down nice that's yeah. cool <laughs> that's fun that's awesome all right vsk what are your goals it's the end of the year what are your goals for 2022 wrestling wise i would love to get signed <laughs> Just start off there. Yeah. True. Besides the obvious. <laughs> yeah uh no i honestly uh like i said like i had made some goals going into 2020 that obviously didn't get to happen i came very close uh for 2021 but still not 100 percent there 
Uh, I want to travel as much as possible. Uh, I have a number in my head of how many matches I would like to get uh, by the end of the year for 2022. I, I was so close this year, but just the way things, you know, have been open and then closed and, you know, playing hokey pokey of pandemic stuff. It didn't get to happen this year. Hoping to get that number just like selfishly for myself. Uh, right. Get some uh, as much TV time as possible and get some cool matches at Impact and then see where that goes. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I'm very, very happy to be doing the stuff that I'm doing right now with Impact. But right. I, I want to keep pushing that. I, there's a lot of guys in Impact that I would love to work with. A lot of matches that I haven't had yet uh, that I would love to have. And just, you know, prove my worth on a different scale. I feel like, you know, sure. a lot of time times you get to come see me on indie shows and you know it's kind of a different presentation than we're doing on impact right now or on right. aw where i'm only getting to have you know five six seven minute matches and then you know you get to come to a blitzkrieg where i have a 20 minute match or something like that i want to be able to kind of show that off on a bigger scale you know whether that's with impact or aw or whoever uh so yeah i just want to keep grinding like my goal is to keep grinding what a weird goal but <laughs> but that's, no, that's that's all i'm looking for <laughs> that's good that's good no, man. you want to good. climb the mountain man this is yeah, like our like, you almost sound like our show like we're trying to <laughs> we're trying yeah. to we're trying to grind yeah. and climb the mountain here exactly uh two questions left if you don't mind one no, of them please. actually is from my 11 year old son okay he, uh he's a big fan of yours he sees you at blitzkrieg oh, and he's you. a big hockey fan so he wants to know yeah he's gonna he wants to know uh what can the Islanders do to get better? Oh boy, win a game. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I think we got to start there. Good start right. Yeah. They, they beat our Bruins last week, man. They beat our Bruins know, last week, but right they, before they, they got shut down. They don't look like the same team that they were last year. Uh, there's some sort of consistency that's missing. There's some sort of I, I don't know if they're I, I don't I don't know what it is. And honestly, like I haven't been able to watch as much as I would have liked this year uh, so far, just because I've been so busy. So a lot of it has been catching quick highlights on my phone or just seeing uh, the notifications when other teams score. So I've only gotten to like sit down and watch like five or six games so far this, this season, but it, it just looks like they're playing a different game than they've been playing for, you know, the last three or four years under trots. It looks like they completely forgot all of that, like team mentality and like play a, play the right way uh, yeah. mindset that they had. That seems to have gone out the window. Everyone seems like they're a step off or a little slow and, you know, they were a tight knit group for the three years. And then they had to lose some people this year that maybe weren't the best uh, losses or the best trades. I, I think losing Everly has been uh, yeah. a, a hurting thing. You know, th there's some young defensemen that went away. There's some old fast defensemen that went away and like nothing against Char, but he's like an older gentleman who yeah. is plottingly skating <laughs> along the ice and. Yep. You know, we, we lost a lot of youth back there. So it's it's a tough time. And then we got injuries on top of COVID. So, like, I would love to use both of those things as an excuse, but I don't know if that's even what the issue is. And, you know, I, I apologize for getting in the weeds with this. But no, it's all good. Man. <laughs> <laughs> You're answering the question. So. At the, at the, I, love I, I love it. At the end of uh, last season, pre-playoffs, they kind of went on this slump where – it almost seemed like they had given up on the regular season because they knew they had clinched. Mm -hmm. And it seems like they're in that mindset still and haven't gotten out of that little rut. They played great for the playoffs, but the regular season it seemed like they didn't care anymore because they had that we're a guaranteed playoff team mentality. Yeah. Yep. And that is almost what it looks like they're playing like now, but they haven't guaranteed anything for this year. And if nothing else, it's going to be a fight to even – get near a wild card shot right now. Yep. I feel so, the same way about the Bruins, to be honest with you. Yeah. The it's, same, same kind of way. It's like, they're just, Oh, we're going to make the playoffs no matter what. And it's not. Yeah. And especially with, with the Islanders. Like they were the team that were the underdogs for so long. They, right. as soon as they got a, a taste of that, uh, not being the underdog anymore, it seems like they forgot how to work hard. Yeah. I mean, I'm not on the ice skating. I can't even skate, so I don't mean to talk shit about these people. <laughs> They're all professional athletes who are way better than me. But just as a fan watching from the sidelines, these are my takeaways. <laughs> yeah, no. Right. Have you been to the new arena yet? Yes. Uh, so I actually got to go twice for hockey, and I was at the uh, dynamite taping there. Oh, all right, right. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. Right. 
I am dying to get down there. Uh, I said I'm going to start a new tradition with my kid. You know, now that he's he's 11 now, start a new tradition where we go to a different sports stadium, like every whether it's mm. baseball, hockey, football. Um, those are our three main sports. You know, every yes. year, and the Islanders are right down the road, so it, like it's like a no brainer to take them that, down there eventually when the Bruins play. So that new the new arena is absolutely like breathtakingly beautiful. Like I grew up with the Coliseum my whole life, and it's like. Nothing can beat the Coliseum for the sentimental, like, uh, heartfelt meaning that it sure. has to me. But it's like they took all of the best parts of the Coliseum and put them in a 2021 fully updated, renovated, state-of-the-art place. And it's just like you walk in and you're like, holy crap, I didn't know a place could be this nice. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, that's right. I'm a Red Sox fan, too. That's how I felt walking into the new Yankee Stadium for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it still feels old, but this is awesome. Let's demolish Fenway <laughs> or at least <laughs> let's build a new Fenway and keep the old Fenway as like a museum or something. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, DJ, you got, I got one more question for you. That's going to be a fun question. So we'll save that to the end. Just uh, <laughs> DJ, you got anything else before we uh, fire off with that fun question? I guess what, like, so we know any other sports you're, you're a fan of. No. So like my whole life, uh, it's just been wrestling. Uh, I'm like one of those weirdo kids who couldn't talk to anybody about anything except for wrestling. Uh, but then like around the same time, maybe like a year or two before I, I, like I was saying, I had that little dilemma where I was like, what am I doing in wrestling? Like, what's this change I need? Uh, I like started looking elsewhere and my family has been into hockey my whole life. Like we used to, as kids go to the Island, game, my sister and I, my parents and stuff, but then we all kind of just fell out of it. And okay. I was never like a diehard fan. Uh, so when like the rumors of the Coliseum possibly closing and like me kind of, I don't want to say falling out of love, but like not having that same like drive for wrestling that I was having that like little two year stretch, I kind of started watching hockey and then got completely immersed in that. Nice. So I'm only like a renewed hockey fan for like the last 10 years, but uh, to think of even like trying to watch another sport i'm like i can my brain can't handle this much got it. I'm like, <laughs> wrestling and hockey is all i can that's, handle right now it's too much go kings go so. kings yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right our fun question we always end the interview with a fun question um right. we're stealing this from our friend uh, phil gentile over at the fig cave he does this on his interviews and uh i'm always interested to see what people's answers are so uh final meal if you had to have one last meal <laughs> could be anything. Could be like you know peanut butter and jelly that your grandma used to make, or sure, sure, or some restaurant. What would be your final meal if you were having one last meal? Oh man. Uh, so the first thing that popped into my head, which I want to have a better answer for this. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. <laughs> the the first thing that popped into my head, which is also my comfort meal that I have after shows, is uh, Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. Uh, four piece spicy nuggets and uh, and a fry. Nice. That's like my literal like go to. I'll like. I think I just had it. Yeah, I just had it twice this past weekend because I had so many shows and it was just on the road. <laughs> I but do like, like that freaking sandwich though. Yeah, like, I, that's I, like I my. On that one. <laughs> I, I'm not like a huge fast food guy, but if I am gonna eat fast food, I'm I'm hunting down a Wendy's and and that's my go to and like. Yeah, that's it. There's nothing better to me <laughs> than that's, that's like no, it's a, it's a really good sandwich. Like so. yeah, that, that's <laughs> literally right. like my comfort food that I could take a bite and just go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> smash through a couple ladders and, and yeah, right, exactly. Let's be pro <laughs> championship. It makes the it makes the pain go away. Yeah. There we awesome. go. And it's part of the four for four. So you can't beat yeah. that four for four. That Wendy's yeah, yeah. four for four. Oh you man. Cannot beat that. No, you um, can't. <laughs> all right, VSK. Thank you, man, so much. Uh, where can the people, if they don't know, where can they follow you? Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Instagram and Twitter. I am is that VSK. I have a pro wrestling tea store, pro wrestling tees.com slash VSK. And then I have a big cartel that has like stickers and pins. I just sold out of my micro brawlers, but that is VSK.bigcartel.com. I, I didn't even mention the micro brawler. How was that for as an action figure collector? Uh, Getting that's an, an that's action a whole other 20 minute podcast, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> like you said, schedule, like, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've been collecting figures my whole life. I've played with wrestling figures my whole life. So I'm looking at it right now, like to see a figure of myself is something that like 15 years yeah. in, I kind of was like, okay, this isn't going to happen, uh, whatever. Yeah. But now not only do I have one, but I have two and they are in 
uh, attires that are so extremely meaningful to me that like whether or not anybody else like understands why like to me it's unbelievable one of them is in blue and orange because i have islanders gear and then one of them is in gear that i uh won titles in and like did tag matches that are very sentimental to me so it's like i'm looking at these things and it's like here's an encapsulation of these super super important things that are you know kind of the driving force of my wrestling fandom for my whole childhood and it's just like right. how is this real life how can this possibly be real and it is it's insane it doesn't so make any cool. sense so cool i love the story love the story man it's awesome Thank awesome you. um all right guys that's vsk don't forget to check out impact on thursdays and i'm going to tell people to do this use the hashtag sign vsk yeah, yeah that's a, that's yeah, a popular like that one. one people yeah. <laughs> people like that i like it too so go for it please yeah. <laughs> sign this man all right yeah. thanks so much man thank you guys